Hey guys, so today I want to talk about a couple of things. That's the Sony 7S III and the webcam utilities that Nikon just released for uh, its bodies. But it's not compatible with all of them, but it's usable with most of the newer systems that just came out probably in the last couple of years. Anyways, it is very important for you guys to notice what the Sony system just released and that's the Sony A7 III, S3. Canon tried to hit it out of the park with its 8K system and it kind of flopped a little bit, you know, it's, uh, it's having some issues there. But the Sony system actually is perhaps what Nikon can do and should do. According to what I'm hearing, Nikon may be releasing a system in the near future. And that's the reason why I want you guys to take notice upon what's happening right now with the Sony system and where should Nikon go from here on. Out front, I'm going to say this, the Nikon did set the foundation for what is now the big issue with uh, cameras right now going full frame and everything that's happening as far as acquisition within the camera and outside through the Artemis. When Nikon released the Z-Body system, it actually shattered or like cracked the foundation that Sony and Canon were sitting on. They never had the uh, intention of going full frame because that's where their bigger systems are at. They don't really want the hybrid cameras to come up to that level. They just want to get it just far enough, but still there be, uh, for there to be a big gap between those two systems. Now, when Nikon released its systems, it went full frame, it was able to shoot 10 bit, it was able to do uh, ProRes RAW at 12 bit and, and whatnot. The only problem there was the fact that everything was external. Anything that you wanted to do internal was only limited to 8 bit within the system when it had a fast XQD card, yet it was not able to record anything beyond 8 bit internally. So the Ninja 5 was a real nice psychic and a real nice addition to the Nikon system because it allowed for it to record ProRes. Working with those files and the workflow is very easy. You don't need to worry about anything. Exporting files are very fast, regardless whether it's be because uh, I'm only talking about this system because that's the only system I own. So with the Nikon system, NLog files, ProRes 422 and ProRes RAW, both of those work really good when you're shooting a ProRes 422 is 1600. When you're shooting ProRes RAW, it, now they just went up to 3200. Uh, I just noticed that within the last week. I wasn't really paying attention prior to that. So I'm not sure when that change happened, whether it was due to the fact that Nikon upgraded its firmware to 3.1 or the fact that the Ninja has upgraded its firmware. Nonetheless, the values are a little higher, which means that you have a little more uh, reach for your highlights. But that's just the problem as well. Something like this light here that I usually use, I have to have a dimmer attached to this so I can bring it basically down to its lowest level. To bring that down, I have to actually have a separate mask or bring down the highlights. But when I do that, the whole scene suffers from it. So everything gets darker. So I have to have a separate mask just for this area for it to work. And that is okay as long as you're doing what I'm doing right now. With that thing static and it's placing, there's no, and you can't really tell the difference. But if there's motion and if you're working on this, you're outdoors or you're shooting, let's say, a real estate video or whatnot, where like you got windows peeking here and there, highlights from the lights and everything coming your way, then that's a problem because you can't really track that that well without ha without seeing that motion of the following of the masks. Some of you guys may be really good at that, but nonetheless, it is not that great because it really doesn't bring back all that information that you truly want unless you make the scene this room extremely bright so you can compensate for the brightness that this thing is having and that requires a, a lot of light i kind of detour there for a second but what i want to talk about really is the fact that sony went the direction of like limiting their sensor to just 12 megapixels the good thing about that is that what sony showed is that by going with a lower megapixel now your iso and your noise levels in uh, in the darks are actually much better and since the pixels now are much bigger it can hold that much uh, that much more uh, information and therefore also increase your dynamic range the only issue with that right now still is the fact that when it captures within the camera the acquisition codec that it's using is extremely heavy and it takes a toll on your computer so that's a problem and that's the benefit of working with the ninja 5 prores is, is what allows you to work in your computer very seamlessly and very easy and that's why I think that the Ninja is such a great device, but not for the reasons that it's being advertised as far as ProRes RAW. ProRes RAW doesn't do much. And that's why I have the problem with it. I keep on repeating that. It's because a lot of you guys have mentioned that, well, what can RAW do for you? 
well, it's not an actual RAW file. It's actually just a glorified JPEG that kept a little more highlight details in its place and it, the files aren't that big. So when are we gonna see RAW files from Nikon? I truly do not know. All I know is this. The based upon what Sony just did about releasing the uh, A7S S3, if Nikon is trying to put out a camera, my understanding is that the newer system will only be uh, a minor upgrade, basically adding turbos to this camera. That's only to for you to add a grip upgrade the 4k to 60 frames per second from what it is right now right now your limit is 30 and the other option is the fact that it can also add uh, two card slots i believe nikon should go all the way in again set the foundation once more and actually provide all those files that you require the, the kind of resolution that you may want out of this camera shooting 120 at 4k is extremely nice but if they could push it to 240 or even higher that'll be even better Right now you can only get 120, a 1080, 8-bit. That's all you can get from uh, this system. I would love it if they would go the, the Sony route where it was 10-bit, 422, internally, whether it be analog or whatnot. Actually, yeah, if they can record analog internally, that'll be good. Even though Canon just put out an 8K system, a lot of people are looking at both systems and they're going 8K, 4K, high frame rate. This one overheats. This one wins. So that's my take on that, uh, that Nikon should actually step it up a bit and come up with a body really soon. If they do not come up with a body that's actually better than what's out there right now, then it'll, it's pointless for them to release a system that's just gonna be subpar to everything else that they currently have. So Nikon's just released its webcam utility for PC and it only works with a Windows 64 bit. So if you have anything else like a Mac or 32 bit, it will not work. But the good thing about this utility is that it now allows you to control your camera via USB. An acquisition card is no longer required. The only reason it's not hooked up yet is because right now I'm also recording directly onto the Artemis. Once I hook this up, this is going to stop recording and start recording on this screen. The process should be seamless due to the fact that I'm also screen capturing right now. But you will need to download this uh, software. So if you go to support, you choose your camera, the Z-series, and this and you go to software and there it is webcam utility so these are all the versions that will work right now in the beta format all of those are supported right now anything else will not work install that and once you get it installed you do not need to actually run any program it's a codec there's no need for you to uh, click on anything to get it started all it's just plug and play launch the software that you want to use and it, it will work i'm going to do right now see i'm go i'm already here if i set it up to this you guys can see that this is the HDMI version video that's coming through and it's being recorded onto this. You can see it's very flawless. They, there's no dropping frames. Everything works out pretty, uh, pretty decent, if I may say. The, and that's exactly what I want to compare. Is HDMI still better than going through the USB ports? Because I like this thus far. I've been using it for uh, with Zoom. But if I can get it close enough or as good as this, then... You know what? Then the utility is doing its job. So let's see how that works. So I'm gonna hook it up. It's gonna stop recording here and then I'm just gonna be recording on screen the whole time. See, I changed over and that happened. The Automus just stopped recording 100% right now, which is cool because I'm recording here on the screen. But as you guys can see, I'm recording the screen right now, but it seems to be a little choppy. It kind of looks like a webcam. You get almost there, but you're not 100% there like you're supposed to. When you hook up through when you hooked up through HDMI or uh, USB, regardless of what connection you have, whether it be a boom mic or whatnot, there's no audio coming out of your camera to the computer whatsoever. So that you're always going to have to get a, a separate mic, hook it up directly through the ports of the, your computer, and set it up uh, that way for it to work. If I go here to the uh, audio settings you'll see that right now it says same as system and the other option I have here is Elgato. So that one right there, if you set it up to that, it does not work. It's only uh, for the uh, video here. Let me see if I can click on it. See, it says the webcam utility and this. If I set it to that, I can see the video, but I cannot see it while I'm hooked up through USB. While the uh, USB port is hooked up, you cannot switch at all. Once you unplug it, then you can actually get the video uh, fed to your computer once again. Here, on audio, you will have to set it same as system, and that's all. So for me, it will be the Realtek R audio. 
you'll be able to use the audio with Zoom uh, real easy that way. So anything else uh, will not work. So if you're having problems with audio, that's a reason why you need a mic directly hooked up to your PC. So as you guys seen, the system works pretty good. It's not flawless, but it still makes this camera, which is a real good camera, a webcam only. It does not make it uh, a DSLR that gets hooked up through the HDMI that you get to really good flawless resolution to the system, which is something that I really like about using it through HDMI. But if, if it allows people that do not have an acquisition card to use it like the way it is and get by, why not? I mean, it's still better quality than, than what in a, in a, a webcam looks like. But I do not like that, that drop frame rate that it has. Don't know how to fix it. Uh, I'm going to play around with it. Uh, so if I find a sweet spot where it works really good, then I'll let you guys know. But for right now, it seems as though like even at 30 and uh, 60 frames per second, you get the same choppy look regardless. That's the only way I can describe it. So those are my thoughts today. That's my rant. And the one thing I just got to say is that as much as I would like to go into the uh, Sony system and try out the camera and perhaps even buy it, I probably won't because I truly love what Nikon stands for and wh where it's going. I just don't. I just hope that whatever their system is next is not a flop and it has some bells and whistles rather than just, like I said, just having a turbocharged Z, uh, Z6, which is not the answer to what's going on right now and obviously hasn't been the answer for a while. Leave me your comments. Uh, let me know below what you would like for me to talk about next or actually what would you like to hear from me uh, in the future. So with that in mind, I thank you guys for, stay, for staying until the end and I'll see you next time.